I'm Megan. Thank you for joining me for yoga therapy today. This practice is for the glenohumeral joint, or otherwise known as the shoulder joint. And specifically, a term you might be familiar with is the rotator cuff. So we are gonna look at the four muscles of the rotator cuff, because that's really what we want to make sure we have mobility, but that's the stability in our shoulder. And you always know you're getting the good stuff because I'm starting out with Mr. Bones here. And I'm gonna be showing you those four muscles. And remember that in my anatomy lab, I'm not asking you to try to remember the names of muscles. This isn't really an anatomy lab. It's, it, it's an invitation to image and experience these places in your body in movement. So hopefully showing you these just helps you to think Okay, I can imagine what that muscle looks like in my body when we're moving them. So the first one, it's easy to remember, we say sits, is the supraspinatus. And if this is our shoulder blade or our scapula, it's right on the top here. And all four of these muscles attach to the head of the humerus or to your arm. They're what stabilizes the shoulder joint, right? That ball and socket. The second one is that uh, infraspinatus, and it's right here on the back of the shoulder blade, so it'd be up against your skin. And then the teres minor is right here on the outer edge of the shoulder blade, teres major below it. And then we look to the inside of the shoulder blade or think of the space, I'm not sure if I'm getting in there, the space between the shoulder blade and the ribs. And that's the subscapularis. So those are the four muscles that stabilize your shoulder. And it's really important to recognize that because I'm gonna have you look at his other shoulder here, which shows the tendons and ligaments. Shoulders are a bit of a mess, quite honestly. Um, there, there's only three bones. You have your clavicle, your, your collarbone, the, the scapula we just showed you in the humerus. So it's simply three bones, but what we gain in mobility in the shoulder joint, we lose stability. So when we're looking at these tendons and ligaments, just know that um, it relies, a lot of it relies on soft tissue and you know the, for movement. So if we don't have some stabilizing stuff going on in that, in that shoulder blade area, there could be problems. So that's really important. And I know um, a lot about healing from a, um, from a shoulder injury, specifically rotator cuff, because when I was younger and was sure that I couldn't hurt myself, I was invincible. I used to do a lot of skiing and jumped off a cliff. I crashed on my right shoulder. Sure, I probably tore it, but at the time I had, you know, an insurance policy where unless you were practically bleeding to death, you didn't go in. So the long and short is those things can happen when we're younger and we think we're fine, they've healed themselves, and then lo and behold, years later, I can't sleep on that shoulder because it gets sore. I have very limited mobility in that shoulder. And this is the practice that I did to help me to bring back both mobility and release the pain in the shoulder. And it's gonna begin with a somatics practice. I'm giving Mr. Bones a little hug here because I miss my hugs. Um, but it'll begin with somatics to help you to wake up to those muscles and, and visualizing those bones. So in somatics, we feel ourselves through the movement of the muscles and bones. So that's where this imaging I hope helps you. We're also going to be doing a little bit of strengthening today because that's super important when we get into that rotator cuff. And then we're going to finish with a nice ooey gooey uh, myofascial release for the shoulder blade area. So in saying that, uh, you will need a block today, just one. You will need access to a wall. That's for our strengthening poses. You'll need two balls. If you're used to doing practice with me, hopefully you have all this stuff, you just keep it around. And those can be tennis balls, or I'm gonna recommend maybe something a little bit smaller and softer. You will also need a washcloth or dish towel, something you can put on top of the balls just to hold them in place. So thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna to see you on the mat in a moment. Uh, we're gonna start on our abdomen. So I'll find you there. And oh, the other thing is we do a couple of seated postures. So if you're more comfortable sitting in a chair rather than on the floor, please grab a chair for yourself. But we will start on our abdomen. See you there. Okay, we're back or we're starting. And hopefully you're on your abdomen. And what I'd like you to do is take opposite hand to elbow, cross your opposite hand to your elbow and gently draw your elbows in towards your armpits or towards your chest 
just so that if they're way out in front, you won't feel as much lift. You want to slide them in just a little bit, first of all, so you can rest your head on your top arm bone, but also so you feel just a little bit of lift through your armpits and a slight bit of maybe even pressure of the rib cage into the earth. And so we use the earth to heal. And I want you to just rest your head on your arm bone. You could even gently roll your head on your arm bone. If for any reason the arms do not want to be in this position, if you, know, if, if you just tore your rotator cuff, this may not be for you. Obviously, you need to do your PT first. But uh, think of this instead of rehab. This practice to me is now prehab. I'm always keeping that shoulder where I want it, right? To avoid injury in the first place. So if you'd rather though, you can take your hands out to, to your sides, but we're breathing. What we're doing first is just releasing and relaxing the respiratory diaphragm. So you might want to shake out your legs, rock the legs side to side. So coming to a place where from the toes to the rim of the pelvis can just be completely relaxed and the thighs are resting on the floor. I'm going to hold my head up just so I don't sound funny, but you're resting your head, maybe gently rocking the head back and forth. And then see if you can bring your awareness right into the front of the rib cage where you might feel that connection of ribs to, to the earth. And notice your breathing, just how you're breathing naturally. And this position is really a position for a breathing technique or for pranayama. It encourages us to do more of a respiratory diaphragmatic breath where we're breathing to the ribs. So start to visualize the bottom of the ribs and then all the way up to the collarbones. And as you breathe in, you're filling that space from the bottom of the ribs to the collarbones. As you breathe out, let the weight of the body just fall towards the earth. So the breath in is this little bit of rising and not only rising up, but lengthening towards the front of your mat. The breath out is the release Let your armpits relax towards the floor, the weight of the arms. Really just letting yourself settle. Settling in. Like if you were in some sand right now and your body is just that every time the, you breathe out, your, that sand comes up and molds around you and you can just let go into that space. And once you've let go, then come into some of those areas we showed on Mr. Bones. So we'll think of our shoulder shoulder muscles on the back side, the rotator cuff muscles, just first by feeling. Can you feel the space of your shoulder blades? Can you breathe underneath your shoulder blades? Think of your shoulder blades like plates and they're sitting on your rib cage, the table. And just breathing in and out of that space. You might also notice the head of the arm bone. So notice where the arm comes into the shoulder girdle. And you can go back around to the front, sensing your collar bones. So we have awareness of those three bones of the shoulder joint. And awareness of the muscles on the back side, the upper back on the shoulder blade that are going to stabilize us and also we're going to find mobility in that space. Take a few more breaths, just imaging and releasing. If you'd like to set intentions for your practice, you can, especially if you have experienced pain in this area and it may be like me where it was years ago or it could be pain from um, repetitive motion that's very common in the shoulder joint. And then when you're ready, we're gonna roll onto our right side, just like you're rolling over in bed, nothing fancy. Um, if you do want a pillow or something underneath your head, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. You're welcome to do that as well. We're gonna start with our angel wings. So this will be more about moving the arm itself and eventually the shoulder. But you can use your right arm as a pillow. So you could put that there if that's comfortable for you or put something underneath the head if you'd rather, and then just let your left arm relax for a moment. So we're gonna find our full range of motion in the arm. What I sometimes do, especially if it is an arm that is healing, is you can take your left hand to the shoulder, just take your fingers to the shoulder, 
and make some circles with your elbow first. And notice how that feels for you, finding your full range of motion. And thinking of those muscles and the bones, four muscles, three bones. But you'll also get into some other muscles in the front here as this practice goes on, the pectoral muscles around the collarbone. Just finding those circles. So if that feels good, you can extend the arm. And we're going to go clockwise. So you start in front of you, always clockwise, then up overhead, and then maybe slightly back behind you. So you just remember that somatics is investigative. It's not like yoga where there's a, an end pose, a goal, right? We're simply investigating. And you can start to roll that arm and imagine holding a doorknob in your hand. And as you're rolling that arm, turn the doorknob. You can turn it in and out. So that's taking your arm through internal and external rotation, right? So no goal and it's not static. We're investigating and it's dynamic movement. And if you find some other way to move this shoulder, you can. So do a couple more rounds, just rolling the shoulder around. So this is about freedom of motion, waking up those muscles. And then we're gonna add a little bit more for the torso itself. So here's where I like to take my arm out from underneath me, drop my head to the floor. Now as you begin to reach the arm towards the back, roll that left shoulder blade. So think of the shoulder blade, roll it towards the floor. And I'm gonna inhale and come back. And you notice I just kind of have my legs stacked. You don't want your legs long. You can let one rest on the other. And then you're making those circles, not being too specific with the legs because I'm focusing on, focusing on shoulders, though you might feel a big stretch in your left hip too. Acknowledge whatever it is you feel. So as your hand goes to the back, the shoulder blade's going with it. So think of letting your shoulder girdle follow your arm and letting your head and neck follow your arm making these nice circles and it really it goes hand in hand a lot of times if we have shoulder pain the neck can be part of that too they they share a lot of the same muscles all our trapezius muscles go up the neck and on the back making those circles and like we're looking out at the hand we're following the hand with the head and then once we've done this a number of times and it becomes really easy where maybe you're not thinking about it anymore. No, that's not true. You're always thinking about it, I hope. Then look in the opposite direction of the arm. So as the arm goes back to the left and the shoulder blade drops to the floor, you're gonna look over your right shoulder. And then the arm comes back and you're gonna look over the left shoulder as the arm reaches to the right. Keep the direction, still going clockwise, the arm circles. So getting our head moving independently of our shoulder and arm. If I talk and do it at the same time, it's a little bit like rubbing my belly and patting my head. <laughs> so just enjoying that motion, that fluidity in your arm. Last one. All right, and then relax for a moment. We're gonna be rolling back onto our front side. We're gonna go right into that left shoulder blade. We already woke it up a little bit. And this time you're gonna be taking your left hand underneath your right cheek. So you're looking out at your left elbow. Take your right arm to your side and just let it relax. Sense the space from left shoulder blade to right hip. Just imagine an X in your body. We can do this to the breath, you don't have to, but if you're choosing to do it to the breath, as you breathe in, you're gonna keep your cheek on the back of the hand and you're gonna lift your arm, left arm and right leg. And then exhale and slowly come down. If you don't wanna do a breath center practice, that's absolutely fine. But we inhale, lift up and exhale and come down. So something we watch for in doing this one is we should be activating the left shoulder blade and right buttocks and hamstrings if you feel things tighten in your right shoulder, which I do because that's my hyperactive crash shoulder, I just try to tell it to relax, that it's the left shoulder's turn. So I'm trying to keep my right arm relaxed. You can also try to keep your left butt cheek and low back relaxed. So this is our cross body patterning, left shoulder to right hip. You can lift up, and though this is a, a movement 
based practice and it's dynamic. If at any time you want to stop and hold, you can do that and work a little bit more at, or focus a little bit more on relaxing the right shoulder and the left buttocks and engaging through left shoulder and right buttocks. And then let go. Come down. You can come back into the crocodile pose. If you'd like, you might take your soles of the feet up towards the sky and rock them. You can stay where you are if you want. I'm going to switch so you can see me on the other side. And then if you're still in your crocodile, come on to your left side. And you can stack your knees if you'd like. You can use your left arm as a pillow or put something underneath it. Let the head relax. We're going to do those shoulder circles first. So just feeling your right arm. We'll start again with the hand, the fingers just gently holding the shoulder joint. And then you're going to make circles with the elbow. Up towards your, over your ear and then towards the back. And we're really initiating the movement more from the arm. But notice how you're starting to feel your shoulder blade respond. Maybe you feel a response in the front around the collarbone. Just investigating. If it feels okay, then you can extend your arm and start to bring it around in those full circles. And you'll notice when you get up towards the back, notice how you feel, if you feel that strain, you don't want too much strain, but that's all those ligaments in the front there, right? As we come forward, we generally don't feel that strain because that's the strength in the back of the shoulder supporting us. And then we can take in that, think of holding a doorknob in your hand and just moving the hand in and out. So what you're doing is internally and externally rotating the arm within that circle. So I say we're doing a double spiral. We're spiraling the entire arm in a circle. And then we're spiraling internally and externally rotating the arm. Just keep juicing up that area first. Finding your range of motion. Remember that if you do feel pain, you have to decide, can you still breathe comfortably? So sometimes there's what I like to call joyful discomfort, but that's different than pain that stops or if it really shoots into the joint itself. You know, feeling long lost muscles is okay. Not joint, not pain right in the joint. And then once we find that, I prefer to drop my head down because then I can let my head roll. You're going to continue with the arm motion. Think of your right shoulder blade and let your right shoulder blade follow your arm towards the floor, into the wall, and come back. And making those full circles. Like I said, you may feel this down in your right hip too because we're using our whole torso. This is a full body movement pattern through the torso. Your head's just sort of swimming along with the arm. Investigating, remembering that movement creates sensation. And the sensation is what we want to experience, whatever it is. And my once grumpy shoulder never could have done this when I started. So I smile and say thank you. And then once we find that we're doing this with the ease, you're going to look in the opposite direction of the shoulder. So as we go to take the arm behind us to the right and the shoulder blade towards the floor, we look over the left shoulder. As the hand comes across the body to the left, you're going to look over your right shoulder. So you're just changing your gaze opposite of the hand, but still taking that arm. It's very common to all of a sudden switch the direction of the arm circles. You're still taking the arm in the clockwise circles or the, through the front first, and then overhead. And you can try with both eyes opened or closed. It will make a, could make a significant difference in your, uh, in your sensory motor experience. That's what this is about, right? The sensory part of the motor. Notice the motor part, muscles and bones, but notice the sensory part. One more round. And then let that arm come in and just relax. 
So we're gonna be rolling back onto our abdomen to do that cross body movement through the right shoulder and the left hip. Take your time, I'm taking my time today. So now you're gonna take the right palm down, place your left cheek on the back of the right palm, your elbows bent, take your left arm to your side. And you typically it's most comfortable with the palm facing up. So let that left shoulder relax. Just sense the space from the right shoulder blade to the left hip. Think of this cross body patterning in your body. This is how we stabilize. When you're ready to come up, if you'd like to do this to your breath, you're gonna lift your right elbow and left leg. But think of using your right shoulder blade and your left side, you might feel the muscles in the buttocks and the thigh, the back of the thigh, hamstring. So you're inhaling up and exhaling down. We do our best not to bend the knee, but lengthen the toes towards the back of the mat and then lift. So you're getting that full engagement through the back of the left leg line and buttocks and low back. Letting your head just rest on your right hand. They come up together. See if you can keep that right low back and buttocks and left shoulder relaxed. Just experiencing yourself through movement. Or if you'd like to stop and just be still for a moment See if you can feel the muscles on the back of the right shoulder blade, lifting that right elbow, the back of the left hip, lifting the leg. Can you relax the left arm and right butt cheek? And exhale, come down. Feel free to shake it out. You can roll onto one side into a fetal curl. I'm gonna come up and sit myself down, but you can roll to your fetal curl side or you can take yourself onto your back, hug your knees into your chest. This is a nice place too, because you can roll your shoulder blades into the ground. And a lot of times we focus on low back rolling, but there's nothing saying you can't rock your shoulder blades into the ground too, right? Do a little massage there. I'm questioning how the uh, audio is going to be with me moving my mic all the time with this practice. Okay. So we're going to be coming into a seated position. And there's where, this is where I will invite you that if you are more comfortable in a chair, please feel free to pull your chair in and sit in a chair. I may grab my block to sit on. Go in my cross legs here where I'm comfortable. So remember that even though I'm cueing you to feel your muscles, we're not treating muscles. I think it's really easy to think of that. You know, we're used to physical therapy and whatnot. In somatics, we're, we're treating movement potential. That's what I like to think of. And that, that includes your experiencing of the movement itself. So coming into a seated position, we're going to do some movements that, so our shoulder blades basically do four, four main movements. They do what we call protract and retract. So you're gonna take your hands together, make a little basket, and then you're going to reach the backs of your hands, your wrist creases, your arms towards me. Imagine drawing your shoulder blades away from the spine. So that's called protracting. So you're spreading your shoulder blades out across your outer back. And then just release, let it come down. And do a few of those, reaching away, and then releasing. If we're doing it to the breath and you don't have to, you can, the activity is on the inhale, so reaching and then releasing, letting go to that state of grace. And so the other thing I recognize is that it's really easy to take the arms forward and the shoulder blades to not move. So as you're taking the arms forward, plug the upper arm bones into the shoulder blades. So there's this drawing inward of the arm bones into the shoulder blades. And I'm thinking of moving my shoulder blades forward and then relaxing down. All right. And then the next one is the retraction. So you can take that same thing, um, back to the hands towards me, and then you're going to 
pull the shoulder blades towards the center of the spine. I'm actually gonna turn around for this one even though I have a shirt on. So we're thinking as we exhale, the palms are coming towards us. And instead of bending the elbows, I'm gonna pull those shoulder blades in and then release. And pull the shoulder blades in towards the midline of the body and release. Super simple, you may have limited mobility, whatever your experience is, just be with it. Pull in and then release. And then once we find both of those, we can put it together. So I have my back to you so you could reach forward and pull back. And just feel your shoulder blades sliding away from and towards your spine. And image that, image that movement away from and towards your spine. and then let them go. So sometimes it, gets, it might get a little exhausting, especially if we don't typically use those muscles as much as we are today. So take a moment, you can roll your shoulders around. And then we're gonna do um, what's called elevation and depression. So these are the other, and not the kind of depression where we go, no, this is the smiley kind of depression. So you're gonna take your hands, and this time I'd like you to turn the palms of the hands out towards, the, towards me, towards the camera, so they're eventually gonna go up towards the sky. And you're going to reach up, and imagine not just reaching your palms up, so if your elbows need to stay bent, you can do that. Lift your shoulder blades up your back. So you're lifting the shoulder blades towards the tops of the shoulders, and then dropping down. And you can even drop your hands all the way down onto your head if you want, bend your elbows. So find that place of rest. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, drop down. So this is that elevation, lifting the shoulder blades up and dropping them down. Resting your head, hands on your head. If for any reason the clasp doesn't work, you can also do it without the clasp. You could lift your shoulder blades up. Feel your, your tops of your shoulders will lift towards your ears. You might feel tight through the neck. And then let them completely relax. And then we're gonna do just the opposite. So you can keep that hand position. Now imagine drawing your shoulder blades down your back and then release. So down your back again, you don't have to clasp. You can plug your arm bones in and so it'll feel like your armpits will draw down towards your waist, tips of the shoulder blades towards your hips and then let go. To see if you can find that. These are really like nuanced movements but we're not doing any weight bearing. So just feeling that. If you find both of those, you can put them together, but sometimes we find we have the mobility in one way and not the other. So then you can do the elevation, reaching up, lift the shoulder blades up, and then that depression, drawing them down and up and down. And if you're ever sitting at a desk for a long time and just want to put this together, so this way, this is also functional to me because I'll do this. I'll sit at my computer and I'll do forward and back, and I could do up and down, forward, and I could do hands either way, forward and back, and up and down, just kind of playing with that movement. And then relax, let them come down. So easy peasy things you can, you can bring into your day. You don't have to unroll your mat. So then taking that a little step further, you're gonna clasp your hands once again, this time's palms are down. Now we're gonna think of ro ro uh, rolling, <laughs> can't say it, I was gonna say rotating, but it's, it's rolling your shoulder blades on your back. So you're gonna make circles over the top of your head. And one thing we wanna watch with this is I, also, I often see everybody stick their neck forward. So draw the base of the skull back, stay tall through your spine. Even if you're in a chair, right? We're not leaning back into the chair. You're holding yourself with your spinal muscles. And then you're making those circles over the crown of your head. You can lightly traction the fingers, meaning pulling one hand against the other. And making those circles. So we'd say this is like circumduction and it's making circles. So there's, there's so many different combinations of movements for our shoulders, it's crazy, but we're just finding a few of those. And waking it up, and you can even close your eyes, fully experience it from within you. And does it feel tired? Does one side feel tighter or looser than the other? These are just part of the experience that we play with. And you can switch the direction of the circles, go the other way. If you need to take a break, please do. 
Again, these are simple things that you could do even if you're sitting at a desk. Keep watching that our head's not dropping forward. Keep the head upward. And feel like you're washing your shoulder blades on your back. And oftentimes neck, oftentimes neck pain comes in. If you're, if you're noticing you're dropping your head forward, that's gonna cause neck pain. So this is gonna help you to, to balance the muscles in the upper back so that the neck is not always falling forward and straining. Create more stability for the neck as well. All right, and then we'll take those down. Relax. You know, it usually feels nice after that to just to go in the four, um, the four degrees of rotation. And if you have a shoulder that is a lot stickier that you do have a rotator cuff injury, I'm gonna recommend you do your shoulders separately, one at a time. Huge difference, huge, huge difference. For today's class, I'm gonna do them together. So we go up towards the ears, I call that the 12 o'clock, and then release down. And then we go back, so that's that going upright. We draw the shoulder blades towards the spine. You'll feel chest stretch, pectoral region, tightness through your back, and then release, that's your three o'clock. Downward, imagine drawing your armpits down towards your hips. Feel the sides of the neck lengthen and stretch. Release, that's your six o'clock. And then forward like you're gonna touch the head of the arm bones and release. So we make those four points. We go up, squeezing. So you can think of this as shoulder squeezing, squeezes and release. And then back, squeeze the shoulder blades, release. Downward, gotta watch my head, release and forward again. So it's the same four movements we just did, just taking it a different way. And one thing I'm really trying to work on is when we were doing it here, we were using our arms as the power, right? Now we're keeping our arms relaxed so the movement is truly coming from the shoulder blades. We've woken those muscles up. So instead of moving our shoulder blades from our arms, our arms are relaxed and we're still finding those positions. The, the lifting up, right? and the dropping and relaxing, the going back, and the releasing. We have the depression going down, releasing, and the forward. And then once you find all four of those motions, start to smooth it out into circles. So go up and back and down and forward. And as I do this, I'm still honestly amazed that my right shoulder can do this at all. Uh, because way back when it, it could barely move. But particularly, like I said, what I found is that I was able to some degree move the right shoulder if it was in conjunction with the left. It's like my body knew what to do, but when I would try to do just the left shoulder, wouldn't happen. There was just that breakdown in muscle neuromuscular communication. And so, like I said, try one shoulder at a time if you do find a significant difference in the mobility in one shoulder. The other thing is you can switch directions. You can go up and forward and down and back. Yeah, so just remembering that we're just doing this dynamic movement to create sensation in our body. So protract, retract. Ah, enjoy. <laughs> That's what it is. And then let go, relax your head and neck. A lot of times I feel that after that, my head and neck gets a little jealous and needs a little response time. So just letting the head and neck go back and forth. All right. So we're going to work our way up to a standing posture. And this is where we're going to need a block. If you don't have a block, if you have something similar, or sometimes you can use a book between your hands if it's not too heavy. But this is the position we're going to be taking is here. And I'm going to change my camera angle so you can see me because we're also going to be using the wall. So we're moving out of the somatics now. This is a short, so I, and if you need more somatics to free your shoulders, I have lots and lots of videos on this station. You can watch those, but we're going to move because this is yoga therapy. Yoga therapy generally, it may have that somatic part, but it's also about waking up and then strengthening in. So this idea that, you know, our body is kind of like, um, a GPS or it's like a Google search engine. And what happens is that 
we take the same route over and over. Like the muscles are so trained to work a certain way. And what semantics will do is it changes the routing, right? So we, we reprogram our body first. But then once we learn that new route, we want to get really good at it. So that's this next step of strengthening the muscles into, um, into this new state of awareness that we've created, okay? So I will see you standing. Okay, so we're standing, or actually you can do this one in your chair if you'd rather, so I apologize if you got up, but it can be done in a chair. But I'm gonna be doing the next one standing, you will need the wall. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the block, and we're gonna take our hands to the block so that we're not, I don't want you to wrap your fingers around it, I want you to press the heel of the hand, so right here, with both hands, into the block and spread your fingers wide. And then press, imagine your hands, we have this thing called hasta banda. So the hand has a suction cup in the middle and you wanna kind of lift the center of the hand off the block and then press the knuckle, the knuckles of the hands into the block and the heels of the hands. So you're, what you're doing is you're gonna activate the muscles in your shoulders. And then I'm going to extend my fingertips down towards the ground but plug my arm bones into the shoulders. So I don't want my shoulders falling forward. I'm gonna keep a tall spine. So I'm gonna plug, take the shoulders back a little bit. So I'm really, I'm already just squeezing that black. You're gonna feel the muscles. You're gonna feel your pectoral muscles in the front, but you're gonna to start to feel your shoulder blades. So you're pressing into the block and then you're just gonna to begin to go up. So this is a great way to start to build some of that strength without weight bearing because you're just creating your own resistance. And as you go up, you'll feel all the muscles in the arms, but also in the shoulder blades, and you can come back down. So remember in the strengthening portion, there might be some fatigue, or there's a difference. You wanna feel the difference between pain versus fatigue. And if you have one shoulder that you struggle with, the nice thing is we're doing both hands together so that, um, you're not allowing that stronger, more mobile shoulder to drag the other shoulder along. They're both gonna stop in the same position, right? Just going as high as you can comfortably. If you need to take a rest, you can. Otherwise, remember, press the hands into that block, hug the upper arm bones towards one another, plug the, sh the upper arms into the shoulder blades, no bend in the elbows. So if you start to go up and your elbows do this, you're losing that connection to shoulder blades. Bending the elbows is losing connection to shoulder blades. So pressing and lifting and just going, you're gonna stabilize first by hugging the block, but then we're also working on our range of motion. And this is flexion coming up and forward. And then we can come back down. We won't do all the ranges of motion today, but this is a really good one to start to stabilize. Squeezing the arms. You might even take a spot wherever that is and stop and hold. And then the interesting thing, of course, we're gonna drop the block down, is that if you look at the shoulders, we come through flexion or we come out to the sides in extension, the end point, the end, it's, it's abduction, it's the same end point, right? But we'd use different muscles to do those movements here Feel that even without the block versus here. That wasn't supposed to be in the video, but sometimes I just get excited. So the next one we're gonna do uh, before we go down and do our mind flashel is I call it the chaturanga dance. So we have a pose in yoga that we do called chaturanga. It's weight bearing on your arms. If I were to turn my whole body down towards the floor, so abdominal side facing the floor, this is what chaturanga looks like. Oftentimes, unfortunately, it looks like this. So we're gonna do chaturanga at the wall to build, it's a great pose to build stability through the uh, shoulder blade area. But what we need you to do first is the dance part. So you're gonna turn your arm bones outward. Just do that a couple times and I do it on it. I do my dance to the breath. I inhale out and then release. So external rotation of the arms, you'll feel your shoulders draw back. There's your external rotation. And then the second part of the dance is we lift up, palms facing up like you're holding a tray and I'm hugging my arms to my sides. 
I'm keeping that external rotation, hugging arms to the sides. So if we're doing this to the breath, it's inhale, I'm hitting the wall a little bit, exhale, relax. Let's do just that one more time. Inhale, external rotation, exhale, hug in, release. So imagine you're holding something between the pinky finger side of your hand, gently hugging in, hugging your elbows to your sides. Third part, inhale, external rotation, exhale, hug in, and now you're going to turn, inhale, turn your palms towards me. So these are crazy things. We do these crazy things in yoga called spirals. So what we've now done is our upper arm bones are in external rotation. Our lower arm bones are in internal rotation. One of the most stable spots for our shoulder joint. Amazing, right? We're built in spirals. We are formed, fetally speaking, in spirals. So these are these spirals. So we're going to do all that pretty little dance. Inhale, exhale, hug in, inhale, hands towards the wall, and then we're going to find a spot to hold it. So what I want you to do is come to the wall, stand to where you can test it first, where you can fall into the wall, but you're going to have about a foot between you and the wall, so your heels should be slightly behind your shoulders. When you fall, you want to make sure that your whole pelvis doesn't fall in, because then really what you're doing is a back bend. So think, let your heart fall into the wall, let your hips stay back more towards your heels. So we're drawing our core in a little bit too. So the dance goes like this. Inhale, arm bones out. Exhale, hug in. Inhale, hands to the wall. Hugging those arms in. I exhale, heart falls to the wall. Now I'm just gonna hold. Mm -hmm. And breathe. So if you're a yogic practitioner and you know that uh, we, do, we do this pose quite a bit, chaturanga, if you do it incorrectly, which means the shoulders are here and we're rounded through the back, among other things, we call it a shoulder shredder because over time, these, the ligaments that, that hold the shoulder in the front get really beat up. But the other side is when we do it right at the wall here, inhale, exhale, inhale, it's a phenomenal way to strengthen that area. If you find it's really easy, you can walk a little further from the wall Inhale, exhale, inhale, but still, and notice when I'm doing the inhale here, I've got a 90 degree angle, that's super important. So I don't want my hands up here. I want my wrist creases in line with my elbows and my elbows right underneath my shoulders. So if you're going further back and you can't hit the wall without your hands being up here, it's not working for you. So it's the inhale, exhale, 90 degrees and fall. And you're gonna, you're gonna find your, you gotta take your wrist into a position where there's quite a bit of flexion, but use your hands, press into the wall. Notice how the more you push the wall away from you, you're gonna feel those shoulders, draw the head of the arm bones back. That's this part of the shoulder. And just breathe. If you're not feeling your shoulder blades, something's going on. Either we're dropping the belly, we might have the hands too high, we're letting the elbows come out to the sides. We'll do one last one, because I love the chaturanga dance. Inhale, external rotation. Exhale, hug in. Inhale, palms towards the wall, still hugging, shoulders have not moved. Exhale, fall heart first. And hold. Breathe into your diaphragm. Mm, so just a slight bit of weight bearing in this one. Again, if you've got one shoulder that's grumpy, this is a safer way to approach this versus a, sometimes we do, we do side plank to strengthen arms because you're using, you're using both arms at the same time. All right, are you tired yet? <laughs> come off the wall. Feel free to move your wrists or to come back down onto the ground and finish up with that myofascial release. So grab your balls and your dishcloth, washcloth. Ah, so it's time to come back down onto the ground and finish our practice with some myofascial release. And the idea here is to go back to really to use the ground to heal and use the myofascial um, movement of the balls just for awareness. So my gentle reminder, if myofascial is new for you, or if you've practiced it with anyone else, it should not hurt. The idea is not to excite the nervous system, it's to relax it and just use the balls as tools for awareness. 
So I do have tennis balls here as well, which I often do use, but I have these soft pink ones. Whichever you're choosing to use, I'll go with the soft pink ones today. And you may want something smaller. Um, golf balls would work, but either way, we're gonna take a cloth and we're gonna put it right over the balls. So it's just gonna help to hold them in place. It's just a little trick I do. Some people will put them in a sock. You can do that too. You can put them in a sock and tie them in there. Uh, but the cloth seems to work well. We have a pretty good idea where our shoulder blades are. So I want you to think of the bottom tips of the shoulder blades all the way down here. What we're gonna do is we wanna keep those balls touching one another. We wanna get the balls to that space in between the inner edge of the shoulder blades and the spine. So I'm gonna position myself so my feet are on the floor and the low back can relax, knees bent. And sometimes it's a little tricky. You gotta find just that right spot. Oh, the other thing is, I'm comfortable putting my head back. Uh, you may want, well want, I've got a block here, but you may well want a pillow underneath your head. I can substitute a block in here, but you can put a pillow under your head. So you'll know right away, if you come down on those balls and your breathing stops and you can't let yourself land, you need something smaller, something softer. So we're just putting them right at the bottom edge of the shoulder blades. Ah. So you should be able to sigh, relax, and just take your arms to your side, see if the palms wanna be up or down, that'll all make a difference. And go back to breathing into your rib cage. Just that awareness of respiratory diaphragm like we did in the very beginning. Your legs can relax, you might even let your knees fall together, soften the sacrum into the earth. So let the ground support you. Just feeling so the myofascial, in addition to the somatic movement, it helps us to release holding patterns. Holding patterns in our body that can be there from physical injury. They can also be from emotional experiences. You know, we hold tension in our body in certain places. It could be a combination. So if you find your breath rate is comfortable, you're able to completely fall into the balls, so you're not holding yourself up in any way, then what I encourage you to do is take your arms to your sides and just begin to gently swim your arms. You might go partway overhead and then take them back down. I'm feeling all kinds of stuff. So notice I'm not lifting my arms off the floor. I still want the ground to heal me, to support me, but I'm just playing with moving the arms. I can even bend the elbows if that's more comfortable. So movement through the arms is gonna make a difference in your sensation experience of those shoulder blades. And breathing right into your rib cage. Think of the respiratory diaphragm right at the base of the ribs. Head and neck is relaxed. You've got that pillow underneath you if you'd like. Anytime you find a space, so we can, with, with myofascial release, we can just release and come through compression, just letting the balls come into that space, or we release with movement in and out of that compression, so the movement's gonna create different sensations. But you may find a spot where you just wanna stop and be still. Then we're gonna slowly work our way up the inner edge of the shoulder blades. So as you feel ready, the easiest way to do this, you don't have to sit back up, we only had to sit down the one time, is take your arms to your sides, and very slowly slide your buttocks towards the front of the mat. Maybe just even like an inch or two where you can feel, you can tell the balls are in a new position more in the center of the shoulder blades. Take the arms into the most pleasant position you can find where you can relax the backs of the shoulder blades. So you'll notice as we move the ball up towards the neck, the shoulder blades will lift a little bit more, but can you still let go and release? So we're not bracing. Bracing is when we feel the muscles tighten and try to, try to protect us or hold us. Let all the muscles relax. Feel the way that your bones will support you. Breathe into the diaphragm. You may have more sensitivity in one side than the other. You may choose to be still, or you can play with different arm positions. Sliding the arms up again, taking them back down, elbows straight, elbows bent. 
It's all up to you. It's your body. And know that from a standpoint of energy medicine, we've come into a very sensitive and important area in the door of the back of the heart here. So just being aware of what comes up, shapes, colors, textures, thoughts. You can be present in that space in the back door of the heart. We have two very important marma points, the energetic points in our body and our, the Ayurvedic lineage. And they're right on the inner edge of the shoulder blades, representative of the energy of the heart. And you may find a place where you just want to stop and hold. I often find when I stop that my head and neck want to respond with gentle movements. So there's no right or wrong. Sometimes your low back wants to respond. I feel a need to lengthen through my low back even more as my body starts to melt into the ground. And it's not about accomplishing, it's about absorption. Absorption of whatever it is you feel being in that moment. Notice you have sensation all the way down the arms, perhaps even into the palms of the hands. And then we're going to do one more move. Maybe you already did another one. That's up to you. But I like to at least address the bottoms of the shoulder blades, the middle area, and then the tops. So as we come towards the tops of the shoulder blades, once again, you're just going to shift your buttocks towards the front of the mat. You're going to find that if I didn't have this block, my head would be dropped way back. And generally, that's not comfortable for the neck. So you're going to want your neck supported with a pillow or something so that it's in more of a neutral position. The block works quite well for me, but you may want something softer like a pillow. Keep those blocks right. So we try to go not so much on the bones. You're going to feel the bones, but right in that soft tissue between the spine and the actual shoulder blades. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so... This is where I get really sensitive right at the top of my right shoulder blade. Definite trigger point for me. So the option is always there to just be still and be present in whatever presents itself. I like to believe that our, our body tells stories. It's kind of like us when something upset us, upsets us. We want to tell people over and over again and and when we do that, we keep living those stories, right? Every time we repeat it, it's like we're cementing it into our body. So when we do these practices, it gives the physical body and the energetic body an opportunity to release those stories that we've been telling ourselves and others over and over. How I crashed on my shoulder, how I didn't have insurance, thousands of years ago, right? But it's still my story. I think, I think it's my story. But the body's saying, let it go. Movement, if you like movement into it. And just being in that space. The other thing I sometimes do, and in this position in particular, is there is an option to lift your arms up and it'll just reposition the balls. And I can feel now that the balls are right more in, inside the inner edge of the shoulder blade, that medial edge, and it's right there. And then I can oh, drop my arms back down. We just wanna be cautious that if there is any sort of pinching sensation, that that pinch doesn't lead to a tingling sensation down the arms or into the hands because we don't want to be resting on a nerve. That's generally nerve pain. But you can be still. You can also gently shift your collarbones, your chest side to side. Your head can respond. Take your last few breaths. Hope you enjoyed this a little bit of a myofascial release for that beautiful space, the back of the heart in your body, and 
we will prepare for a final relaxation, Shavasana. When you get ready to come out of this, rather than sitting up and using your core muscles, because I'd like to think you're very relaxed, if you want to roll to your left, take your right arm across your chest, and you can slide your left arm up as a pillow. Maybe you have a pillow underneath your head. If you want to roll to your right, then take your right arm across, and you're just going to press into your feet and gently roll off of the balls. And you can come into that fetal curl. This can be really yummy, just sort of undulating the spine, moving those shoulder blades in and out. Mm. Make any noises that come up in your body. I encourage noises. Another way to release. Sighing out the mouth. And I'm going to come up and be your leader. If I don't, you may lose me in this video. But please feel free to find your most comfortable space for our final relaxation. <clears throat> Removing those balls from underneath you. Your legs could be extended. You're welcome to put a pillow or something underneath the knees if you're extending your legs. <clears throat> Whole back and spine comfortable. Floor supporting us. And even in this pose of relaxation, the body, the physical body relaxes, but the mind, the brain has a job to do. And the job of the brain is just to stay present in whatever is, to still be present in the sensory experience of muscles and bones, maybe particularly in the rotator cuff area or the shoulder girdle area shoulder joint, but just being present even when we're not moving, when we're not doing posture. What do you experience in stillness? Very powerful. What do we experience when we get quiet and still? Sure to send some thoughts of loving kindness into your shoulders. Think of the way that your shoulders protect your heart. Maybe send your pranic breath, that life force energy, into the space of heart. Let it expand outward into the area of shoulders collarbones, the head of the humerus, shoulder blades, all the tendons and ligaments and muscles, as if each cell of the body can feel you, each tissue area feels your breath. It's like the breath delivers a code to each cell, reminding it of its job and saying thank you. Do you feel ready to come out of your position of relaxation? You can do so. Feel free to first just gently roll your shoulders in circles. All that movement potential that we found you can gently move your head from side to side. And then you can even feel your backside moving with the floor. Have that experience of body on the ground. 
the relationship of body with ground. You can breathe deeper if you'd like. And if you'd like to roll over first before coming up to a seated position, please do. You can stay there as long as you'd like. I will take my hands to my heart center. Whoever's out there with me today, I really appreciate you watching this video. Um, know that you can heal yourself. It takes time, but as I found out, it's never, it's never too late to release those holding patterns, whatever, whatever reason they may be there. Um, and that even though the shoulder may be somewhat unstable, we have a lot of power in our upper back. Remember that, strong upper back. Peace, love, joy.